is Warsaw. This is place the movie film. And if you have watched my video top 5 generations of the Pokemon anime, you will know that I hate Diamond and Pearl the most. Even though I stick by that it is the worst generation in my opinion at least. I can't really say that I hate it in almost every aspect. Number 5 Generation 4 The Diamond and Pearl generation of the Pokemon anime is hands down the worst generation of the Pokemon anime. As Kajim is still the same fucking loser he always was. But what makes the Diamond and Pearl generation so bad is Starvin. Oh my god. I fucking hate Starvin with a passion. I even made a whole video why I think she sucks. Now even though I don't like AES, I will say that what I like about him is the fact that he's so stupid that it's funny. The same cannot apply to Darwin. She is an annoying cunt. Oh god. And you know what the worst part is? There are a lot of episodes who focus on Pokemon contests. And I find Pokemon contests extremely boring, especially since Stavn is not a good character at all. There are two major reasons why I hate it. Stavn is an annoying whiny cunt. And the Pokemon contests are fucking boring, even more so in this than in Advanced. At least May was interesting there, so she kept the contests from being absolute bore fests. The same cannot apply to Darwin. She is an annoying cunt. Oh god. And you know what the worst part is? There are a lot of episodes who focus on Pokemon contests. And I find Pokemon contests extremely boring, especially since Darwin is not a good character at all. In fact, Darwin is the reason why this generation of the Pokemon anime is at the bottom of the list. But besides the fact that I don't like Darwin, there's also another character that I'm not a big fan of, and that is Farry. Farry is an annoying character. But thankfully, even though this is the worst generation of Pokemon anime, there are a few redeemable qualities about it. Brock is one of the main characters, and Brock is a very good character. He's a good breeder who always knows what he's doing. So yeah, I do like Brock a lot, and I will admit that Hunter J is an awesome villain. Hunter J makes Pokemon into statues, and I will admit that he is pretty unique. But the absolute best part about the Diamond and Pearl generation of the Pokemon anime is Poor. Poor is about the only reason why I was interested in this generation of the Pokemon anime at all. He's a very good trainer who knows what he's doing. He doesn't do friendship with his Pokemon or any of that shit. He just accepts Pokemon that are strongest to him. I know some people might not like Poor because of the fact that he's an Aesop, and you know what? Being an Aesop is part of his personality. And it works for him, and that's what I love about Poor. He is always willing to call out on Ash's bullshit, and that's fucking awesome. And I would go as far to say that Poor is the best part of this generation of the Pokemon anime. But since Stavn is an annoying cunt, yeah. There are a few other reasons why I hate the Diamond and Pearl series of the Pokemon anime. But these two are really the main reasons. This video is about what I like about the Diamond and Pearl generation of the Pokemon anime. And believe it or not, there are more things that I like about it than dislike about it. I am still considering it the worst because it really is the worst one in my opinion. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Number 15, Tobias. 
Now I do like Tobias more than many things on this list. But the reason why he's at the bottom is because the order of this list is both based on how much I like those things and based on how much impact those things have on the dominant pearl enemy overall. And yet, Tobias only appeared in two episodes. That's why it's at the bottom of the list. Anyway, Tobias is a fucking cheater. He is. He uses powerful legendary Pokemon instead of doing it fairly. And you know what? I really fucking love the battle between Ash and Tobias. And I was rooting for both of them equally as much. And it was also so fucking awesome to see Arsa Skeptile beat the shit out of Topias. You know those annoying cons that you run into when you try to find someone to battle online that have teams of just legendaries? Yeah, Topias is pretty much like those cons. Except he actually knows what the hell he's doing. Unlike the majority of Pokemon battlers with mostly legendaries who don't even train them or anything like that and are only using them because they have no faith in themselves. But overall Topius is fucking awesome and this battle is my second most favorite battle in the league. My favorite being one with poor. Oh, and I will get into why I like poor later on this list. Yeah, Gary has evolved as a character since then, and now he has become a mature adult. But well, alright, maybe not exactly an adult, since cartoon characters don't age. It really sucked that she only returned for 10 episodes at most, but it was nice to see her back. Her Squirtle is now a Blastoise. And I also must tell you that the episode she was in is literally the only Pokemon Contest episodes of Diamond and Pearl that I actually liked. And that's only because May is so fucking awesome. The rest of them are boring as hell, and it also doesn't help that Davin is such a whiny cunt. Also, Didi? Could it be a coincidence that it's the same name as that idiot cunt in Dexter's Laboratory? So, a massive cunt is named after another massive cunt. Interesting. It could be possible that the writer sent by Stexter's laboratory or didn't have that in mind, and this is purely a coincidence. And I wouldn't put it past me, so Stexter's laboratory and the Pokemon anime are from totally different fucking countries. Number 11, Krogunk using Poison Japan Bro. I'm not going to talk about what I think about Brock overall, since he has been there since the fucking beginning. So it isn't necessarily about Diamond and Pearl in particular. 
But I am going to talk about one of his Pokemon though, and that is his Crow Gunk. When Brock talks to a woman, He most likely wants to have sex with Krogon gets out of its Pokeball to use Poison Jab on him. That is so fucking funny and I laugh every time. In fact, I think it's even funnier than when Max and Misty did a similar thing. I know that some people have a problem with this because it doesn't make much sense. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. When humans get attacked by a Pokemon's Thunder, Flamethrower and War, they survive it just fine. Maybe you'll find that stupid because it doesn't make much sense. To those people I gotta say that the Pokemon anime is a fucking cartoon. It's supposed to be nonsensical to take advantage at being a fucking cartoon. I mean, it don't have Dark Shorts, Dexter's Laboratory and more. Don't make much sense either, but they are still fun to watch because of it. Also, there is an explanation why these attacks don't fucking kill the humans or make them seriously injured. You see, the Pokemon can actually control how much they injure someone or if an attack injure them or not. That has been shown many, many times in the Pokemon anime, so that does make sense. Even if it didn't, so fucking what? It's still a fucking cartoon, and nonsense in cartoon is supposed to be nonsense, so that makes it more fun! Number 10, the movies. The thing that makes the Diamond and Pearl Pokemon movies different from... The rest is the fact that they all followed a continuous fucking story. At one point, S is trying to stop. At one point, S is trying to stop. A dark demon on dark right, but it turns out that the dark right isn't doing it intentionally. In fact, I will watch all of them many, many fucking times. Number 9, the filler episodes. Alright, I'm gonna go into a problem that I have with the Dominant Pearls anime. There's that one episode where a poor Valor is saved. And then there is of course this episode where Asus Pikachu beats the AS overrides you with them to use a thunderstorm. I know that some of you might say it's technically not a filler episode since it's the episode where Ash gets rid of his thunderstorm. But here is the thing, the thunderstorm was never a major item to begin with. Every single Elite Four member had at least one episode dedicated to them. Number 4, Nanto. Nanto is honestly one of the nicest rivals that AS ever had. And out of all the nice rivals AS had, he is literally the only one out of those that's both interesting and not a fucking idiot. Oh, 
All the rivals that are nice, like Cameron and Bianca, are very dumb. But anyway, yeah, he has mostly bug types. He has a few other Pokemon that are in bug types, but most of his team are bug types. And grass, of course, let's not forget about that. But anyway, his rose rate is fucking awesome. And the best part, it didn't start out as a rose rate, it started in its first fucking stage. He's so nice and generous. Number 3, Hunter J. Anybody who thinks that the Pokemon anime is just for kids really need to take a good look at this character. Because she proves that statement totally fucking wrong. Because you see, she doesn't just try to stop AS, there are many points where she tries to fucking murder him! Holy shit, that is so dark for a show that's supposed to be for kids. So yeah, the fact that she tries to murder him proves that this show isn't 100% child friendly. Of course, I'm not gonna overlook the fact that AS has the best team of any generation here. And you know what? I found myself rooting for him in most of the battles. I didn't do it at first because of a reason that I'm not getting into, so I'm ashamed of it. But when I rewatch the episodes now, I am fucking rooting for him. Number one, Paul. Paul isn't just my favorite thing about the Diamond and Pearl series. Paul is my favorite character of the Pokemon anime as a whole. And as a whole, I mean from all generations. Because you don't become a professional Pokemon battler by being nice. You don't! Why do you think AS isn't doing so well? He doesn't want to battle AS but says he knows that it's a waste of time. And he is also right when he says that AS is pathetic, because to be honest, he very much is. And did I also mention that he has a motherfucking Mark Mortar? Yeah, he really does. And when a best trainer in the Pokemon anime has a Mark Mortar, you just know that it's a fucking awesome Pokemon. So Mark Mortar haters, suck it up. And yes, I am saying best because he is literally the best trainer of the Pokemon anime. Am I taking back when I say that series is the worst one? No, to be honest, I'm not. Even though there are a few things I hate about Diamond and Pearl, these few things are incredibly major and do damage the quality of the show. And even though I do fucking hate it to some extent, there are a lot of things that I love about it. 